All right. <laughs> Good morning. I'm all excited. I finally found a workaround at work. It's my little dilemma of falling off the edge of the earth. But anyway, I did me a little test experiment the other night when I found this, and it worked. So, and it seems to be working fine this morning. More than one way to skin a rat. Or cat, or armadillo, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but anyway, good morning. And we waiting for people to get on here and log on. I'm going to start us out like I do every Sunday morning. Today is the day the Lord's made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the Lord for this day. Praise you, Lord, for sending your son, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus, for being our sacrifice. Praise you, Jesus, for walking out of that grave and giving us the same resurrection power that rose you out of that grave, that walked you out of that grave, is living inside of us. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. So, anyway, we'll... Really like I say, giving people time to get logged on here. I know I was just getting started. And like I say, today's a great day. Very nice. We got nice weather. Love this time of year. I don't know, it's kind of, I have to flip a coin, man. Do I like fall or do I like spring the best? I don't know. I like to see the new life of spring, but then again, So I like to see, I also like this nice break from all the summer heat and everything, so. Anyway. Uh, it's a beautiful day. Hmm? It's a beautiful day. It is, it's a beautiful day. I used to visit here in my neighborhood and even down along the coast down there. I'm glad you guys are, I think you guys are supposed to be getting some rain down there in Texas. That you've been really, really, really needing down there along the Gulf Coast. You know, I know it's been bad down there. At least we have it rain periodically at times throughout the summer. We did drop down into drought condition, but that way down below normal and what was needed, but Nothing like it has been down there in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, across that part of the world. Right now, I know it's, I think over in Virginia's, maybe Carolina's even, it's been real dry and they're having fires over there. So we pray that God sends the rain, even snow for places in the high places that need the snow. It's time for the seasons to change. So, you said you made a work around? Yeah. Is it working? It's fine. I mean, I was curious. Are you there? I, I see two people. I see two, but I don't see any bubbles as to who they are. Okay. Or comments. So I'm wondering what happened. Mm -hmm. It should be doing it. Can, can people comment? It should. Did it show anybody up there? Right now, I don't see you know, I see two eyes. Okay. Okay, there's a... Thank you. We were wondering yeah, yeah, okay. if it was working. Good deal. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. This was an experiment workaround thing to get me back into landscape mode instead of portrait mode. Mm -hmm. The reason I like doing it landscape like this is because it puts the comments off to the side of me. And then when I... Plus, whenever... I download this video later and get ready and put it up on YouTube and Rumble. They like their videos to be landscape better than portrait. It works better for them, so that's the main reasons why. That's the reasons why. Anyway, like I say, now next Sunday morning, I'll go ahead and say this now and we'll say it again before we leave, but next Sunday morning we're not going to be here. We have something else that we need to be doing, been asked to come to, so we're going to be gone next Sunday morning. I don't know, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Just see where the Lord leads it. We may do something Sunday evening. Yeah, I don't know, we'll see. 
I'm not solid on that yet. I'm praying about it and so forth. And <coughs> so anyway, like I said, next Sunday morning we're not going to be here. We have to be somewhere else next Sunday morning. But that's just to see y'all know. Okay. Okay. So, I don't know if Audrey's here yet or not, but anyway, if she is, happy birthday, Audrey. Mm -hmm. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy anniversary of your birthday. Yeah. If you're not here yet, okay, so I done told you happy birthday. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you even posted it on your timeline. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'll go ahead and get us started this morning. I won't. Jesus, we thank you for this day. Father, we are just so grateful for this day. We know this is a day that you've made. We're going to rejoice and be so glad in it. We're grateful for everything that you've done. It's like I said a while ago when I was talking this, you know, we are so grateful, Father, for you sending your son, Jesus, to show us the way. We thank, are so thankful for you, Jesus, for going to the cross and being the sacrifice for our sins and the blood that covers us from all unrighteousness that has ever been within our lives and father we repent of our sins we repent of our sins not just on that one time when we accepted you jesus but we repent of our sins along the ways at times because we do we may not flat out blatantly sin against you father but i know with in ways we come short of your glory so father please forgive us of our shortcomings forgive us of not being totally totally holy yet we're working on it we are we are facing our salvation with fear and trembling and we are being sanctified as we speak we are sanctified covered in the blood of jesus as we stand before you but yet still in our lives we are going through a sanctification process so father please we know that you are a patient you are a good loving merciful and graceful father and you have forgiven us and please as i say we repent now of any way that we've come into shortcomings in this past day past few days week since we've last come to you and repented father please accept our repentance and as we begin this broadcast today i ask that the holy spirit come in and fill this place to fill me to give me the word that the words i speak are purely and solely of you father of your spirit that is working and operating through me and coming out through my mouth <coughs> And we bind up any powers of witchcraft that would come against this to try to, to be a distraction, to take away, to manipulate, to bring fear, to bring anything. We're not going to allow these things to take place. Uh, words, sometimes words are not gentle. They are not the words that we want to hear. But yet they are the words of truth that come from you, Father. And they're for our benefit. They are to lead us and to guide us and to keep us on the path that leads us straight to you. And the, the road through life is wide and there's many turns and there's many forks and so forth that's the road that leads to the pit of hell Jesus, Jesus. but the road that leads to heaven is straight and narrow so father we're going to stay on the straight and narrow in the road that leads us to you and we bind all spirits of offense there should be no one take offense no offense whatsoever because when you speak it is your truth and no word twisting spirits shall interfere either in jesus most mighty name it is and it all will be so you know i've said this a ton i don't know how many different times i know i've said it a few times i know i said it when i first began these messages you know i had myself i really 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 do feel a whole lot like june as much as I would love to spend all of my time and all of my conversation and speak absolutely nothing but about all of our common salvation in Jesus and all of the great and the wonderful life that Jesus has promised us. Yes, we have well, a promise of life, a good life in this world too. But then again, we also have the promise of they hated me, they're going to hate you also. So, you know, that's one of these in this world. Man, we got a promise of a life to come. An everlasting life. 
that is just going to be so glorious that man words can't even express it so you know we've got this and man as much as I would love to spend absolutely nothing but to talk about the goodness of God and all of this kind of stuff I also have to come to talk about things that are not necessarily too awful pleasant so and that's why I don't want no offense going forth I bind the spirit of offense from going forth and so anyway what I want to talk about is you know I've said that I'm not pretty sure I've said this a time or two but Derek Prince I guess you all know I love Derek Prince I love listening to Derek Prince I've learned a lot from Derek Prince he's a great he was, he was a great minister of the Lord and always in teaching and in deliverance and Derek Prince is is one that I really really love and another one I really really love to listen to a lot that I've learned a lot from who was another great minister of the Lord was David Wilkerson so anyway I don't know maybe either way I've got this but the, those guys too we're also like you sure man we could talk about the gospel and all of the goodness of the gospel but to bring us to that point to where we're actually living in the goodness of the gospel we have to kind of go back and tell them of these things that just don't sound too good they just make us uneasy but they're for our benefits all right so anyway Derek Prince one time he uh, was talking about you know he was in World War II he was a soldier and anyway uh, England he was English you know he was in the English army and they were gonna go in to liberate some city from I believe it was in Italy I think mm -hmm. from Mussolini's grasp you know I believe that's who he's talking about mm -hmm. and then they had the generals commanders all these people were all having this nice talk you know getting prepared for it and all that and the uh one of the generals asked him asked one of the commanders that how you got your troops stationed around the city and you've got the city surrounded and there's going to be much much resistance and a lot of fighting going on and man it's just going to be hard to penetrate inside that city and he said oh, all right don't worry about that i already got that covered he said i've got my fifth column already inside they've been putting troops inside the city coming in just a few at a time here and there over a period of time and they were coming in and they were already established and all they were waiting on was to hear the trumpet blast the signal the attacks was taking place and man they were going to go they were going they were prepared and they were going to be already on the inside fighting from the inside out as the other soldiers were coming in from the outside you know. and that's the way the enemy likes to operate within us that's the way the enemy is operating within this country today this nation to this very day the way the enemy operates inside the churches as well it already has the enemy has is has a fifth column that is within us and, and I'm gonna start out obvious but the obvious is what we see going on in our faces today is man you just look in our nation right now ever since all of this with Israel and Pal and the Hamas and I don't say Palestine I'm gonna say Hamas all over all this because this is where the war is this is who Israel is fighting against Hamas they're not fighting against Palestine they're not fighting against the Palestinian people they're not fighting against the Palestine movement they're not fighting against anything to do with Palestine they're fighting against the terrorist group Hamas and any other terror group that is threatening to wipe them and annihilate them from the face of this planet that's who Israel is at war with right now today as we speak okay. but here today uh protests like crazy and then here we got all this news media and we're seeing all of this stuff where all of these protests are taking place and all of this uh what do they call that anti-semitism 
-hmm. is all taking place on college campuses and all that. You know, we've been, we've been, believe me, we've been duped. We think all of this stuff is because of the colleges and the universities and all of the crazy minded liberal professors. We think all of the, all of this going on is because of the liberal ideology taking place and being taught to our kids through these professors. No, it's not. Look at all of these, man, there's 300,000. I mean, there's 3,000, 30,000 protesters showing up at a place. Look at the people they're protesting. Are they all a bunch of college kids? No, they're not. These people who are doing these protests are from different walks of life. Even I'm not going to say that they're all hmm. I'm not going to say that they're all Islamic, but man, I tell you what, you look at them. The majority of them are sure are dressed like they're Islamic. Here in these United States, down here at our southern border, man, believe me, immigration is what built this country. And I have nothing wrong with immigration when people are coming here to create, to make for themselves a better life, a life to where they can have a life more abundantly than what they had in the nation that they came from. I don't care whether it's Mexico or Guatemala, even Iran, to come here to escape from religious freedom, to have their religious freedom and to live their life. A lot of these people, I mean, you know, these places where Christians are just persecuted, and I'm not talking about saying you can't pray in school. They can't pray at all. People from North Korea to come here, Christian people who come here, and the only way they can come here is through our southern border. I get that. That's people who come here to make for themselves a better life. I get it. But man, it's like from the words of Donald Trump, there are some bad, bad, bad people coming across our border. There are murderers. There are rapists. There are religious people who are hell-bent on not just destroying Israel. They are hell-bent on destroying this nation. And they've been coming across for a long time. And when they come across and they, whether they set up their military type compounds and are preparing for a holy war or whatever, that's, Doesn't matter. but their voice that they're speaking, their propaganda that they're speaking, that is the fifth element, the fifth column that is just, is working on destroying this nation. That is the fifth column that is turning Americans, brother, like it was in the Civil War, brother against brother, sister against sister, father against son. Remember, our words are like spirits. And when we sit and what we speak out goes out, and when it lands inside someone's ear, it takes root. And there are reasons why Jesus, why God, back in the old time, everybody likes to live in this progressive Christianity and say, well, you know, God just towed Israel when they moved into the new lands and they would go to war against their enemies to kill them all. Don't take no prisoners. Don't bring no slaves. Don't do nothing. Kill them. Don't have anything to do with those people from these other nations. There were reasons why God said that. And there are reasons why today we need to be careful of who we, I mean, it's almost a little bit too little too late, but yet, because this done happened. That's why we're having all of this unrest. That's why we're having all of this division among the American people here. It's because we have allowed the evil to come inside our nation. And I'm not just going to talk about the evil of Islam, I'm going to talk about, I mean, man, we've allowed, there are people coming here from the islands, people coming here from these countries, and are they, are they, and they're not living, they're not Christian people. We have people who, are, who operate in Santeria coming across the border daily. We have people operating in Voodoo coming across the border daily. We have people who come in here and bring in their African 
demonic beliefs coming across our border daily. We have people from India coming here and bringing their Hindu beliefs and their Buddhist beliefs and all of this kind of stuff daily. We have people from China coming in and bringing their religious beliefs daily. We have all of these different beliefs coming in to this nation and look at what it's doing to us. So like I said, there is a reason why God said, have nothing to do with those little gods. With those people. Mm -hmm. Because the spirits with them are going to destroy you from the inside out. I mean, look at King Solomon. I mean, sure, he had a bad thing going on, man. He loved the women. I don't know how many wives. I, I can't remember. I don't remember how many wives, how many concubines. concubines and mistresses and all this stuff he had. But you know, he allowed these, uh, he took um, some wives from, I believe it was Moab or Canaan or somewhere over in there, one of them countries who had been one of their enemies forever, who followed other gods. But look at what he did. He took a couple of these women as wives. And the next thing you know, here is King Solomon, the wisest man ever. Because he asked God for wisdom. And God granted it. And he led Israel to be close to God. But when he married these women, what did they do? They led Solomon into the worship and following of other gods. Which led to a demise in Israel. And that's what we've got going on here in this nation today. I'm talking about things that are obviously in our face, that we can see. I'm not talking just necessarily spiritual, supernatural right now. I'm talking spiritual, supernatural at work in the physical. That we can obviously see. I mean, it's all over the news. Uh, <clears throat> a girl the other day, a high school girl, I forgot exactly what state she was in, Minnesota, I think it was, or maybe, or maybe Michigan. But anyway, she was raised in a Christian family, raised in a Christian home. She would given her life to Jesus. She loved Jesus. She prayed. She read her Bible. She kept control over her flesh through Jesus. She's going to school. They take her into this room, this little class thing that they got going on. They called it quiet time. She has to go into this, this room. Amazing. And the first thing you do when you walk into this room is bow down to the statue. And then you sit down and you get into all of these different positions and poses and speaking all of these different chants and mantras. To this Hindu God that you're supposed to bow down to when you walk in the classroom. Well, she refused to bow down. She told the teacher, said, I'm not bowing down to any other God besides my Jesus. They have a picture of a guru hanging on the wall with a little table underneath it. People are come in and they're supposed to bow down to this guru's picture. And they play these little offerings, whether it be flowers or incense or whatever. And they lay these things down on this table as an offering to the school. But all of this is called quiet time. It's not called yoga. It's not called Hindu worship. It's called quiet time. And these are the kind of thing because we've allowed these other religions to come into this country. And yes, it's affecting our children. And yes, it's affecting us, ourselves now, even as adults, us baby boomers who are super conservative and want to do everything right. You know, we believe in America as a land of plenty. We believe in all this kind of stuff. But man, look what it's doing to us even. Our plenty ain't so plentiful anymore. But anyway, I'm gonna put this verse up that you got to. I'm gonna go start right here with Jude chapter, of course, chapter one, because there's only one chapter. But but anyway, I'll start with Jude one. 
Verse, verse four. If I can ever get there. Want me to read it? Yeah, go for it. New Living Translation. I say this because some ungodly people have wormed their way into your churches, saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. The condemnation of such people was recorded long ago, for they have denied our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. That is the New Living Translation. Pretty plain, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I like that plain. Okay, I found this this morning when I was looking up this verse. Um, a lot of the other translations, she said ungodly men, and this here says, for most of the translations have it this way, said, for there are certain men crept in unawares. Mm -hmm. Now, we sit here, and we, when we think of the word unaware, that just means that, you know, we don't understand it. I mean, we didn't notice it. You know, we don't see them coming, and we don't, you know, that's our, that's our in our mindset of the, the definition of unaware. But anyway, this right here it says, the special word chosen by the Holy Spirit is most helpful in understanding this warning. The Greek term translated, crept in unawares, is parasnunal. Peri I'm not too good at speaking these foreign words, all right? But it's parasnunal, or however. It's a uniquely compounded word, meaning to sink down alongside. Profane. It says that they sink down alongside. Which means people come in. And it's their job. It's their task. To come in. And sink down. To fit in. Right alongside with the rest of us. You know, we talk about sleeper sales, you know. We hear that in the media all the time. The news media are sleeper sales, you know, and they're just waiting for it. That's the fifth, that's the fifth call. That's mm -hmm. these unawares. And like I said, they have come inside the church as well. <coughs> um, I just put it up in the Amplified, which is pretty cool. I like the Amplified. It says, for certain men have crept in stealthily mm -hmm. gaining entrance secretly by a side door their doom was predicted long ago ungodly and in parenthesis impious profane persons who pervert the grace the spiritual blessing and favor of our god into lawlessness and wantonness and immorality and disown and deny our sole master and Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Wow, that's not pretty explanation. I don't know what, what is. If you read that, that's pretty, pretty bold. Impious. Profane. And they are. Profane. Satan's fifth column. And they are inside the church. Inside the devil woods, too. Yeah, there you are. Yeah, they, mm. yeah. He ain't going there. <laughs> he ain't going there. Okay, now then, let me go to Revelations chapter 2. One of these days, and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to spend some time and I'm going to go through it. But anyway, I'm going to, we're going to go through Jude. In the letters to the seven churches. And anyway, let me get to Revelation chapter 2. It's working kind of slow right here. Yeah, they're working slow over here too. Sorry. Okay. Verse 18. That's where I'm going to start. I don't know how far I'm going to go through this. I may skip around through it or whatever. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, the Son of God who has eyes like flame of fire and feet like burnished bronze says this, I know your deeds and your love and faith and service and perseverance and that your deeds of late are greater than at first. Jesus knows our well intentions. 
we come to him and we are on fire for the Lord and he knows all of our best of our well intentions. But then somewhere along the way, something happened. And this is what he's saying to the church here. The church is this again, Thyatira. This is what he's saying to them. He says, I mean, he says, your deeds, man, the church was on doing great things for the Lord. They had love. They and faith and service and perseverance. And that your deeds of late are greater than deeds at first. Something happened here. Their deeds now are not the deeds that they had at first. So something's happened. All right. He says, but I have this against you. He's fixing to tell you what happened. He says, but I have this against you, that you tolerate the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, and she teaches and leads my bondservants astray so that they commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to God. I mean, sacrificed to idols. So here's this unaware Here's this ungodly person. Here's this person, and this one here is definitely working and operating in witchcraft. Comes in and manipulates herself right up to the top in position with the sole purpose to leading people astray. Leading them away from all of their good deeds, all of their perseverance, all of their love. To everything that Jesus just commended them for, she's leading them. She has led them down into a path of sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. Now we say here and go, well... I don't have someone, anyone in my church in leadership that's leading me into sexual immorality or telling us that sex, free sex is great and all of this kind of stuff. We don't have nobody doing none of that. All right, let me ask you one little simple question. Are they kind of leading you over here into a path of eating food that's been sacrificed to idols? Have you thought about that? They're not the obvious part. They're not, you're not leading, being led down into sexual immorality. Even though we get this, that's all right. You can live a little sexual immorality. You know, everything in moderation. Yeah, okay, let me ask you this and all of that. Is a little murder all right by God in moderation? So long as you do it in moderation. It's worshiping idols. All right, by God, so long as you're doing it in moderation. Is worshiping idols all right so long as you're worshiping God? No. That stuff leads you away from God. The Lord says, friendship with the world is in amenity to God. So here we have, in all of this stuff going on today, we got these prosperity gospels. We got these, everybody is wanting a special word from a prophet. Now, there's a lady in Africa the other day. She asked a question What is a prophetic conference? You never heard of such a thing. Somebody answered her and she goes, Oh, okay. She goes, In other words, it's one of these ones where these places were. A prophet comes in and tells people what they want to hear and everybody's happy and they all go home. And we got them coming out of our ears. Today. All right. You want to put something up here. Yeah. Okay. And, I looked up just now. and he goes, but Jesus goes on and he says, I gave her time to repent and she does not want to repent of sexual immorality. Behold, I will throw her on a bed of sickness, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. 
So not only now is Jesus going to take this prophetess, this Jezebel, he's going to take the people who follow her, which is his church. Unless they repent of their deeds. That I will kill her children with plague. And all the churches will know that I am he who searches the minds and the hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your deeds. We turn away from God. And we go to follow him. These unawares. These false prophets, these false messiahs, and turn away from God. And what's back here behind all the good stuff that we did, all of the good deeds that we've done, all of the patience, I mean, all of the perseverance, all the love that we put forth, all of the loving our brother as ourselves, of loving our neighbor as ourselves, of loving God with all of our heart and our mind and our soul. But now we're turning it around and we're thinking that we can live. We need to be putting our prosperity focus onto things of this world instead of staying true to God. But there is a promise. We are going to be put in the same place as the ones who have come in, sat right down in the seat beside us. Yet to lead us astray. Like 23. Uh huh. Like 23. Uh huh. But then there's also, and this is not all doom and gloom, okay? <laughs> That's what I love about Jesus. It's not all doom and gloom. He tells you the doom and the gloom. He wants you to open your eyes, He wants your ears to open up, He wants you to realize that there is doom and gloom. You know, we're not living in this world of unicorns and gumdrops. I've said that many a times, and I still keep saying it. He did not promise us a life of a unicorn and gumdrops everywhere. It's either straight and narrow, or the wide, big, wide, free way to hell. But anyway, verse 24, he says, But I say to you, the rest who were in Thyatira, who do not hold to this teaching, who have not known the deep things of Satan, as they call them, I place no other burden on you. Nevertheless, that you have, hold firmly until I come. The one who overcomes and the one who keeps my deeds until the end, I will give him authority over all nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of the potter are shattered. I also have received authority from my father, and I will give him the morning star. The one who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is why I say we need to be, of all of the gifts of the Spirit, like I say, man, the gift of prophecy would be nice would be great. The gift of healing would be so wonderful just to walk into a hospital and lay hands on every single person yeah, laying in I those beds that, so and uh -huh. empty that hospital out. Man, that would be so wonderful. Oh, nervous. man. If I did that, man, I would... Oh, man, that would be so cool. The two greatest gifts that we need and we need to be praying for earnestly and we need to be getting into God's Word and seeking earnestly day in day out are the gifts of wisdom and discernment. Two spiritual gifts that we need to be seeking with all that we have in us because, man, if we're not careful, oh, here comes a little Miss Unaware. She's just going to come in here and blend in with the crowd. Sit down beside me. She's going to whisper, Did you know this? Did God really say? Yes, 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 yes. It's 
why we need wisdom and discernment. So much in these days and time. Because man, I'm telling you, they're all over, scattered all over this nation. And they're scattered and filled inside all over in the churches today. Okay, so, so then I'm going to go to. I'm going to put this up here real quick. Okay. It's just a little, I mean, I went and looked. This is a simple. In modern society, idolatry can take many forms. Some common examples include prioritizing, thank you, material possessions, wealth, fame, relationships, or even social media popularity above spiritual value. Uh, some of the 10 examples, um, there's some examples. Job status, which jobs used to be just to get away from ends meet, our identity, money, material things, physical appearance, entertainment, sex, comfort, phones, technology, computers. Those things can become a part of our idolatry. <coughs> just wanted to add that. Before he went forward. Well, before I go here, just remember, people say, well, my pastor or the prophet is using biblical words. They're using the Bible. They're using the Word of God. Yeah. Also remember, Satan when Satan came and tempted Jesus in the wilderness, and Jesus threw the Word of God to him, Satan turned right around and threw the Word back to God. The little slave girl in Acts she was sitting there, walking behind Paul for a few days, speaking the truth. These men are from the Most High God who have come to show us the way. The absolute truth. But then all the other stuff she was saying wasn't truth because Paul got greatly annoyed. And he turned around and he cast that spirit of Python out of that woman. That spirit of divination. So, if someone's just using scripture, a little dab of scripture, and they're putting their opinion into it, and they're putting their soul, their emotional feelings of what they believe it says and all that. It's not always right on page. Now, one of the things, too, when we talk to you guys, you need to also go back and look. By Don't means. just take our words for it. Right. Please, 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 because we are just like you. We're trying to do something to help people. We're just a bunch of watchers. We're just trying to ring a bell. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not anything special. We just love Jesus, and we're trying to take an avenue to help those around us and those out there. So please, please, always, always check. Be like the Bereans. That's right. Wow. Okay, in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 1 is where I'm going to start. And I may do a little jumping around in this passage right here. Be like the Bereans. Go back and read it all in context. But anyway says, verse 1, do your homework. Go back and read it. Do like the Bereans. Go home and read it for yourself. Anyway, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you. The sexual immorality of such as does not exist even among the Gentiles. Now, Peter, Paul is talking to a, the church. He's writing this letter to a church. The church of Corinth. And he's talking about sexual immorality that don't even take place among all of the unsaved, the pagans, the Gentile. He's talking about sexual immorality that is just pretty bad immoral. I mean, it's pretty way out. I mean, it's bad. But yet they're allowing it. It's not. Nobody said anything about it. Nobody's questioning it in the sky. 
They're allowing him to come in. Said, you have become arrogant and have not mourned instead. So that the one who had done this deed would be removed from your midst. And that's exactly what we need to do. We all the time. We can't judge people. Can't I'm judge sorry. Them. If you come into my house and you're claiming to be a Christian and you're trying to start hitting on my wife, believe me, you're getting out of my house. I figure it's the other way around. Some Christian woman comes walking into our house and tries to go to hitting on me. I believe my wife is fixing to pick her up and throw her out the door. I know my wife. What do you mean? When we're talking about the church, when we're talking about Christians, people who claim to be believers in Christ, who, but yet they're still living in an immoral lifestyles, we do not need, we need to bring, bring in these questions in their mind. Why are you still doing this? How can you be saved when we're supposed to have this repulse against sin and simple behavior? How can you be calling yourself a Christian, but man, you're still partaking in the ways of the world? Because remember, it's like I said, well, if you're friends with the world and its ways, you're an enemy to God. So how can you be a Christian when you're doing things that make you an enemy against God? You can't. And all that's going to do is send you on the big wide freeway right straight into the pits of hell one of these days. You can't do that. You can't live a double life. God knows your heart. It's what he said a while ago where I was reading God in, in Revelations 2. He said, God looks at your heart and your mind. So where's your heart and your mind focused? Is it on doing the will of God the Father, like little boy, 12-year-old boy Jesus, who was being about his father's business? Or is it doing these sexual immorality, the faciousness of life? All of these things in the ways of this world. Because I'm here to tell you, it ain't going to work that way. Now here's Paul, he's still, in verse 3, he says, For I, on my part, though absent in body, the present in spirit. You know, I say this all the time. There's no distance in the spirit realm. And that's why I say this. Because even though Paul was not there with the church in Corinth, he's there with them in spirit. All right? There's no distance in the spirit realm. That's why I come when we can come together and we can pray together and we can go through a deliverance prayer together. Even though we're long distance, we may not be right here together. These prayers, because we get together in spirit and these prayers do have effect. Demons can leave from over long distances. Healing can take place over distance. I mean, the centurion comes to Jesus and says, please help my son. Or my, no, it was a servant, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this time it was a servant. He said, please help my servant. And Jesus talked and went on through this conversation with the centurion. So then the centurion leaves Jesus. I mean, Jesus told him that it is done. It is, it is, it's happened. So Jesus leaves. Get, I mean, the servant leaves. I mean, the, the centurion leaves. He gets back, and here come some of his servants running out to him and told him, say, ah, oh, your servant's well. He's healed. He's free. He, you know. And the centurion asked him, say, well, what time did this happen? And... The, they told him what time of the day it was. And he goes, wow. Mm -hmm. That was when Jesus said it is taken care of. So see, it's because I can't be right here right now and physically lay my hand on you. Or because you can't physically lay your hand on me. 
the healing power of Jesus, the healing power, the deliverance power of the Holy Spirit, and the deliverance power of Jesus, the kingdom of heaven, the power, and so forth of the kingdom of heaven. It goes when we're together in spirit. It goes forth, and it touches, and it delivers, and it sets free, and it heals. Because there is no distance in the spirit. I don't even know where Paul was at the time when he built this, but he sure wasn't there with him in current. He was probably in probably in Rome in prison. So we were in three, verse three. I mean, and he even goes on and he says, you know, in the name of our Lord Jesus, when we, you are assembled and I with you in spirit and with the power of our Lord Jesus, I have decided to turn such a person over to Satan for the destruction of his body so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. So again, Paul is reemphasizing that when you are assembled and I'm with you in spirit, with the power of Lord Jesus. So see, I mean, this is just reiterating what I just went through, what I just said. Okay. But now Paul turned this guy over to Satan. We're not supposed to judge, really. Sounds like a pretty harsh judgment to me. When you turn somebody over to Satan, and that's because this guy was doing something just really, 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 really bad. All right, and he was. There's a lot of different speculations, but anyway. Uh... Your boasting is not good. I'm going to hear in verse 6. So your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough? Clean out the old leaven so that you may be a new lump, just as you are in fact unleavened. For Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Let's therefore, therefore, let's celebrate the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. You know, when we allow people that we know are claiming to be Christians and so forth, but yet we know that they're still living lives in sexual immorality, when we know that they're still living lives in drunkenness, when we know that they're still living their life in any sort of immoral behavior, when we know that they're living their lives bound down and worshiping to the false gods and idols of today, and we allow them to keep coming, it softens us. <clears throat> their little dab of leaven could come in and creep inside of us as well. And then the next thing you know, we're going, to, well, Brother Billy Bob over here, he's he's living a sexually immoral life. There ain't been no lightning strike come down out of the sky yet to kill him. Maybe. Maybe I should start doing a little sweet talking to this little young chick here at the store. You know, she's been talking nice to me. Maybe if I talk a little nice to her, maybe we could go somewhere for that, you know. Like I said, lightning hasn't struck down Billy Bob yet. So what's not going to happen to me? And we give in. We can't be that way. We don't need to be that way. We have to stand firm. Is that like I said, anyway. I'm getting it. Verse 9. It says, I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. I did not at all mean with the sexually immoral people of this world. Now this is where we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. I tell you not to associate with sexual immoral people. 
I'm not talking about the sexual immoral in the world. Who's he so talking about? He's there. talking about the sexual immoral within the church. Well, let's just expand on the let's not to associate with the witches in your church, ones who are practicing witchcraft. Don't associate with the ones who are bound down to false gods and idols in your church. Now, there's ones out here in the world. Do we need to associate with them? Well, possibly. How in the world are we going to make believers out of them? How are we going to get them to accept Jesus if we don't associate with them? But the ones inside our church who are trying to live this double life, who have crept in as unawares and trying to take down the church, do not associate with them. Verse 10. I'm not meaning, of course, that you must altogether shun the immoral people of this world, or the greedy graspers, and cheats, and thieves, or idolaters, since otherwise you would need to get out of the world and human society altogether. Verse 11. But now I write to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of Christian, brother, if he is known to be guilty of immorality or greed, or is in an idolater, whose soul is about devoted to any object that usurps the place of God, or is a person with a foul tongue, railing, abusing, reviling, slandering, or is a drunkard, or a swindler, or a robber. No, you must not so much as eat with such a person. Mm -hmm. What business is it of mine, verse 12, that we have the right he said, what business of mine is it that, and what right have I to judge outsiders? It is not those inside the church upon whom you are to pass disciplinary judgment, passing censuring sentence on them as the facts require. So what he's saying, what is he saying? He's saying, yeah, you have a right to not be a part of that. But the people in the world we were to reach out to. Right. Because God alone sits he said, on those who are outside. Do not even dine with a person, this person. He's not talking about the people in the world now. He's not made that distinction. He's talking about the people, someone inside the church who is operating in these things. Do not even dine with them. Have nothing to do with them. If you can't do like what Jesus said, if a brother sins against you, believe me, if a brother sinned against God, he's sinning against you as well. But if a brother sins against you, you go to this brother and try to get him to repent. If he won't repent, then go get another brother or two to go with you and try to get him to repent. And if he still won't repent, then bring it to the church. Then it becomes, falls upon I uh, say in this, but the church government, the overseers of the church, it comes upon them to remove the person if they still won't repent. And we do not need unrepentant, continually living in sin people as our brothers and sisters if they are claiming to be in Christ. Now, now I'm going to make a comment here as well. There are some of us, <clears throat> some, children, some people, some people, that are struggling with things. And are you to help them? Yes. If you see that they're willing to be helped. Am I correct on that? Hmm. I'm talking about people that, that are that come into church, they're still learning. Right. You have to remember there is a line on Right, that. I mean we got the babies. I kinda of talked about that last week. We got the babes in Christ. They're still learning. You know, they're still learning. There's things they're yes, gonna do. We show patience with them. But yet we need to be discipling them. Filling the holes. Well, we will, and the thing about it is, we will start seeing their fruits right. expand. So remember, this but if is they sit there and they look at you and they're saying, you don't know what you're talking about, I'm just going to keep living my life the way it was. They're not repentant. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones. No, and this is... Yes, you're right. It must be willing. And there are some that are willing. And there are some that are old and have been there. Become stagnant, mm -hmm. stale. Like a non-moving pond. You ever seen a non-moving pond that's been sitting for a while? It's stagnant and gross. And I mean, it's nasty. Now here in the summertime, our creek down here, sometimes it gets cut off. There's no water going out. There's no, no water, water coming, coming in. in. We have basically a big pond. 
and at least we still have water there's a pond but then you'll start looking you start getting this moss and algae and junk growing on the top of it gross stuff and then it's, yeah we're once the crease quits running we quit swimming in it mm -hmm. we really do so long as we got running water coming in now we'll go down there and play in the water until it gets so dry to where the tree quits running and then we got this stale stagnant nasty algae looking pond we can't right. be like that and we can't we got to help our brothers and sisters not to be that way that's right okay sorry my two cents is over and that's what, huh my two cents is over but <laughs> But it's not our place to judge the people in the world. Believe me. Everybody that was in a bar last night and drinking and whoring around and whatever they were doing. partying and doing whatever in the world they were doing, that's not my place to judge them. I'm not going to judge them. I can't judge them. That's reserved for God because that's yeah, what because it says. because it says God alone sits in judgment that's right. on those who are outside. Drive out that wicked one from among you and expel him from your church. Don't allow that to happen. But the ones that come inside the church who are claiming to be brothers and sisters in Christ, who are claiming to be a Christian, who are claiming to be born again, but yet their fruits, their actions are showing otherwise. Do not associate with them. Do not even dine with them. Let's be like Jesus said, go to that brother or sister and try to get them to repent. And if they won't repent, and go again with another brother or sister and try again to get them to repent. And Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name. It says in this passage, or he says, well, two or three are gathered in my name. I will be there with them. That's one time he said that. So when we go to another to someone and trying to bring them to repentance and we're going with another brother or sister or two, Jesus said, well, two or three are gathered in my name. I'll be there with them. So not only now is it me and another brother and sister, but Jesus is there too. And if they still won't repent, then we turn them over to the church. And this is where Paul, who was helped establish that church, who led Corinth to salvation through the gospel and discipleship, discipled, he's the one who turned the man over to Satan. It's not my place to turn someone to Satan. It's not your place to turn someone to Satan. That is something for the elders of the church. For the church to look to. You get where I'm going. And then I'm going to go one more time. And I'll go to Galatians. Chapter 6. And it'll be verse 7 whenever I get there. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a person sows, this he will also reap. Don't be deceived. Don't let these unawares, don't allow these witches come into our churches, into your church. And I say church in the true sense of the word church. That's why we keep that's why I pray against the powers of witchcraft from coming inside with us on Sunday morning. That's why I pray against the spirit of offense from 
taken and where twisting spirits have taken and twisting what the Lord says to turn it into offense or whatever. We're going to allow these things to take place when we are joined together in one mind and one accord as a body of believers. Whether it's just you and another brother or sister talking on the telephone. At that time, you know, let's not forsake to assemble together. People like to take that and say, well, you're not assembling. You're, you're not Go, you're not assembling. You're not going to a church service every Sunday morning. You're not acting to assemble. When we assemble with someone who is of one mind and one accord, and it's all joined together with the Holy Spirit, and Jesus is there with us as two or three are gathered together in his name, Two or three gather together in my name, I will be there also. So it's not this great big church up here on the corner. It's not one of these 15 churches between here and town. Where Jesus is, is where at least two or three gather together in my name. But God's not going to be mocked. All of these things that these unawares, all of these things that these, all of this evil that's taking place in our nation right now, this power of unrest, these powers of division, these powers of witchcraft that are manipulating the people in our nation, all of this stuff that's taking place right now, God is not going to be mocked. There's a time coming for them. And there's a place that's going to reserve just for them. And all of those who follow them. We need to make up our mind. You know, it's, it's like, uh, I think it's in Joshua. Choose for yourself on this day whom you will serve. Jeremiah. Sure. I mean, it was Jeremiah. I it's Joshua or Jeremiah. Okay. Choose for yourself on this day who you will serve but as for me in my house we will serve the Lord and anyone who wants to come and look me with this two faced oh I love Jesus I love yeah, Joshua, I'm sorry. I love to sing the praise and worship I couldn't remember. oh I got a special word for you you are going to prosper in such great wealth. You're going to have the most beautiful girl in your high school class as your wife. It's not that God doesn't do that. Yeah. But remember, right. be cautious. God gave me the most beautiful woman on this planet. Oh. And I'm sure there are some other men out there that may want to argue with me on that one, but I'll tell you what, this is the most beautiful woman on this planet. Thank you, honey. For that saying, I got a true love. God gave her to me. So see? <laughs> but anyone who does these things, anyone who is one of these unawares, anyone who is coming in and is a part of your life and they are professing Christ in one breath, and professing the devil and the world in another bro right. get away from them cut right. them from your life cut them off right. I mean, Jesus said if your hand causes you to sin It'd be better for you to cut, it, cut off. it off it's better to have come into heaven lame I mean minus one hand than for the whole body to go to the tormentors yeah let's we got to cut these people out of our lives. A little bit of leaven will leaven the whole lump. You can get you some dough when you put just a little bit of yeast. It may not rise much, but it will rise 
more than it would if you'd ever put the yeast in it. So we have to cut things from our life, and at times it's painful, but maybe we may have to cut people from our lives as well. Because the one that matters is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The one that matters is to hear those words, what matters is to hear those words, welcome my good and faithful servant. Come. That's what matters. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being with us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace. You are the most gracious. You, man, your grace is unending. It is unfailing. Your grace is what's drawn us to you. Your grace is what's given us new life. And we thank you for your mercy, for knowing that we fall short. We thank you for your mercy, for knowing that although we haven't done our best, your mercy knows that we can do better. But although we haven't done better, you're accepting of our best. We ask that you help us to do better. <clears throat> and we ask that you help us to do better. You help us to be more servant, to, to bring to you our bodies as living and holy sacrifices, which is our spiritual act of worship towards you. And Father, any way that we have been persuaded and led astray by any of these, the witchcraft that operates, that has come forth as leaven from any of these unawares in our lives, within our churches. Father, right now we break free from all of their curses. We break free from all of their spells, all of their manipulation, their intimidation, their domination, their control, their seduction, the seductive doctrines of demons that have entered our mind. Father, we ask and we pray for your wisdom. We pray for your discernment. We pray for these gifts earnestly. We need these gifts so desperately, Father. So we ask in the Holy Spirit to bring this gift of wisdom and discernment to each and every person here today. Each and every person who hears this today, tomorrow, next week, whenever it may be, but each and every person who hears this, bring them wisdom, bring them discernment, Father. Bring it to them through your power of your Holy Spirit. Bring it to them through your Holy Spirit that's inside. Bring these things. Father, we're just so grateful for all that you've done. We thank you for being here with us. We thank you for these words. We thank you for this message. We thank you for it all. Jesus. Thank you for the saving grace. And Father, we do. We repent today of any way at all where we have come short. We repent of any way that we have been deceived and stepped in to a wrong teaching or a wrong belief or, or even just weakening ourselves. And turning and turning more, weaken ourselves from your power and your strength, but becoming weaker into following these deceptions. Father, rebuild our strength, replenish us with your Holy Spirit, replenish us. Father, we're just so grateful, and we love you, Jesus. We're so proud of you, Jesus, and proud of all that you've done for us. We're so accepted. Thank you, Father, for sending your son to die on the cross for us. We thank you for that same power that rose Jesus from the grave that's living inside of us. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus, the name above all names, the name with all authority of heaven and earth. And we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Have a good Sunday. Right. Now repeat this again. We're not going to be here next Sunday. We've got something else we've been asked to go do. So we're going to be here next Sunday morning. 
and I don't know, we'll see, we'll be praying over it and see what the Lord does. Maybe we'll do something Sunday evening or maybe another day or something. We'll see. I don't know. I just do, I just, I want to say I live life by the moment because in a way I do, in a way I don't. Because I just want to follow the lead of the Spirit. Yeah. How can you be, have everything planned out, be walking this road, a straight road, and you come to an intersection, and you're planning on going straight, and keep planning on going straight, and going straight, but the Holy Spirit says turn left here. Now, we have to allow, even though we plan our lives to a degree, we also need to plan our, allow the room for the Holy Spirit to lead us in the direction that He needs us to go. So, anyway, we do. We love you guys, all of you. And again, happy birthday, Audrey. And, you know, and we will see you guys when we see you. And God bless you all and enjoy your day. God bless and we love you all. Till next time. God bless.